Damn it. So close. Why is this level so hard? Ah. That's it. I'm going to get an AI to play this level for me. So, getting an AI to play New Super Mario Bros. How am I going to do that? The best way is probably to use a fancy AI technique, which is all the rage these days, called deep reinforcement learning. To explain how this works, it's a bit like this. Firstly, we need a way of showing an AI the game, which can just be done through images. Not nice high definition images though, but really horribly pixelated images, since the bigger the image is, the bigger the AI's brain or neural network has to be in order to accept them. And any image which doesn't have pixels the size of Legos will probably make my PC explode. So the next thing we're going to need for an AI to be able to use deep reinforcement learning is a list of actions that the AI is actually able to take. For this game, however, this is pretty simple, since the AI just needs to be able to run, sprint, jump and spin, and do some different combinations of all of the actions above. Lastly, we need to put the reinforcement in reinforcement learning, and this is done by just giving the AI a signal to tell it if it's doing good or bad. Again, for New Super Mario Bros, this is pretty simple, since the objective is basically just go to the right and don't die. Or to put it in slightly more mathy terms, we're going to give our AI a small reward when it goes to the right. So every time it moves one pixel to the right, we'll give it some small reward like 0.001. And every time it dies, we'll give it a minus one to discourage that as much as possible. So that's pretty much all the information reinforcement learning needs, but I haven't really explained how it's actually going to learn anything yet. Well, this is a very complicated process that can take years for people to really understand. The basic gist of it goes a bit like this. Firstly, we take the images of the game and pass them into a fancy thing called a neural network, which takes the pixels of the images and does a bunch of random adding and multiplying to them in a bunch of random different ways until it eventually spits out a single number for each of the actions we decided earlier. These values the neural network spits out are meant to predict how much reward the AI thinks it's going to get if it takes the action. After playing many, many games, the AI can learn to predict these values really well by adjusting exactly what the neural network is doing. Once we can accurately predict the values for each action, we can just choose the action which is predicted to give the highest reward, which should hopefully be an action which makes sense. With all that out the way though, it's time to actually start programming this thing, and I thought I'd begin by programming the different actions our AI can take. My first attempt at this failed miserably, since I assumed the emulated Wii Remote I was controlling was being held sideways like most people tend to play the game. But after looking around for a while, it found out it was actually having a nunchuck plugged into it, which was really screwing around with how the controls were being used. But after messing around with that for a while and figuring out the problem, I was able to get Mario to move side to side. After fixing some slightly stupid bugs because for some reason I couldn't count to 8 for a while, things were actually looking pretty good. The only problem I had was that spinning didn't seem to work through the AI's controls, only through Dolphin's hotkeys which the AI can't actually access. After spending way too long trying to figure out why this was, I eventually learned that the Wii Remote used something called an accelerometer to detect when you shake the remote, which allows Mario to spin in the game. The code I'm using to allow the AI to interact with the emulator though doesn't actually include the accelerometer, so that was fun figuring that out. On that note, if you're a C++ developer and have some free time, please consider contributing to the GitHub on screen as adding shaking and nunchuck support would allow me to make AI for a bunch more games. Currently, games like Wii Sports which require shaking, or games like Super Mario Galaxy which requires a nunchuck just aren't possible, but if we're able to develop these features, I'll be making AIs for loads of different games. For this project at least though, I did get everything but shaking working. But since beating this level did actually require you to shake the remote at one point, I had to use a slightly janky solution and just teleported Mario to the next platform. Anyway, with all the coding out the way, it's time to get this AI training. So after about half an hour of training, our AI is able to sometimes get lucky and make a couple of jumps, but mostly just falls to its death. The biggest thing it's learned so far though, is that going to the right is what it needs to be doing, and jumping is very useful for avoiding death, even if it hasn't quite got that part down yet.
After an hour, our AI is still mostly jumping to its death, but we can begin to see it being a little more cautious rather than just aimlessly jumping. Occasionally, the AI is even able to get past the first few platforms, but that's still a pretty rare occurrence at the moment. After three hours, to be honest, the AI hadn't really improved much, still rarely getting past the first set of platforms, and when it did, it just kind of died miserably at the next hurdle. Progress when learning, however, often doesn't happen as smoothly as we'd like, so I thought I'd give it some more time to train, and hopefully it would grow out of its phase of being mostly incompetent. So after 5 hours, sadly our AI was still really struggling at the start and looked like it hadn't really progressed much in the last 2 hours. If I'd have been watching this in real time while it was training, there's a good chance I might have just pulled the plug and tried something else. But luckily for our AI, I was sound asleep in bed by this point, so I wasn't going to be turning it off for at least a few more hours. Thankfully for our AI's health, by the time I'd woken up at around 10 hours of training, the AI really started to make some strides and was starting to look like a pretty decent player. Even though it was still nowhere near completing the level yet, it had convinced me to let it live for a few more hours just to see how far it could go. So after 15 hours, although there was a few glimpses of some skill, sadly the AI really hadn't progressed too much. From the value predictions you can see at the top of the screen, the AI seemed to be a bit more confident in its actions and I guess it was a little more consistent too, but overall things were still pretty slow. I could have given the AI the boot at this point, but I had already waited this long and it didn't appear to have completely stagnated yet, so I decided to just let it run for a full day before I turn it off. After 20 hours of training, it appeared as though patience was starting to pay off, since the AI was starting to get to the end of the course almost every time. Even though it hadn't quite managed to finish the level yet, I was confident that in a few more hours it could finally beat this awful level. So I don't know what kind of steroids this AI took in the last 4 hours of training, but by the end our AI was officially living up to my expectations and honestly making this level look like it wasn't even a challenge, and just beating it like it was almost in a speedrun like fashion. On screen now you can see the AI's progress over the last 24 hours, in terms of how much reward it received on average per game.
Thank you so much for watching this video and be sure to like and subscribe for more AI content.